Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is considered by many to be one of the best fighting games out there. It is perhaps the most known title of Capcom's various crossover series. Last year, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 was announced. Of course, the response and expectations were, to put in a sense, huge. Now, the game has dropped one day after Sensitive Bitch Day, aka Valentine's Day. And well, I have a review with you, so let's get the review started. For those not in the know, the Versus series pits one famous franchise against Capcom's franchise. In this case, it's Marvel. Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is a 3-on-3 three three fighter in which characters fight one another, can get switched out at will, and call on characters on reserve to, re to assist them, similar to what um, various King of the Fire games did. One thing Marvel 2 vs. will probably notice are the controls are slightly more different in the sense they are more simplistic. This fine system is based off last year's Tatsunoko vs Capcom and had both games were made by the same guy. Okay, for those who do not play Tatsunoko, um, what do I mean by the controls? Well, instead of two punch and um, kick buttons, there's about three attack buttons, which are light, medium, heavy, and the fourth one is used to launch characters into the air. This control scheme works well and I think it opens the door to more casuals get into the game as that is always a good thing at last. I like everyone to have fun when playing games. That's the truth. Now the hardcore guys are probably like, you know, screaming, what does the game offer for us? You know, well, though the game is, is simpler, the depth lies with the game mechanics. Some things like the advanced guard which lets you block and not take chip damage and pushes enemy back so you can have a bit of space. Also other things like you know variable assists, variable combos, 2 to 3 man specials, cancelling specials and many more. I, I mean I can go on and on. There's so many things I can really talk about. But, but I think these things are the things one will want to really work on if he wants to be come on, a very dominant player, especially online. But one thing I almost forgot to talk about is the X Factor system. It's similar to the um, Baroque um, system except you don't use your life bar and you can't use it and abuse it an infinite number of times. Instead, the X Factor works on your um, special bar and you can only do it once. So basically, if you have one bar, you can do it, you can have it for like 10 seconds, 2 bars, 20 seconds, 3 bars, 30 seconds, I think that's the limit of what you can do. It is activated by pressing all 4 buttons. The advantage is that it gives you an increase in speed and recovers all your red health. This could be a uh, game changer in the sense of how the Ultra system in Street Fighter 4 worked. As to the fact that you can only use it once, it keeps things very interesting. Alright, now let's talk about the um, character roster. I'm very mixed on the selection of characters. On one hand, I like some, some are terrible, but overall, my complaints, so many characters are missing, especially if you look at the previous title, and this title here is so little, yeah, I mean, where is Cyclops, the, the Fantastic Four, or, or Venom, you know, or Gambit, I mean, where are these guys? Um, where are you gonna put Mega Man X in there? You know, yeah, some crusty character selections. Why is C Viper or She Hawk in the game to even begin with? And to make matters worse, there are characters on the disc and other characters coming soon that Capcom wants you to pay for as DLC. Is this the color kind of industry we live in now, where someone pays sixty dollars for a game and doesn't get what he's doesn't feel like he's getting a complete package? I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are some cool characters in the game but when it comes down to the character roster the closet is half full where are the other clothes I don't know right, I'm not really gonna talk about the game the graphics and music the game looks like a living breathing comic and the character teams are back and remix too sorry Marvel 2 fans no jazz music that can take you for a ride so to speak okay so I'm just I'm just wrap it up here anyone makes me like a quick review I mean um a long review Though the game is called Marvel vs. Capcom 3, it feels more like a sequel to, you know, Tyson Logan vs. Capcom. I know everyone's saying that, but it, it, it's true, bear with me, bear with me. Everything from that game has been tweaked and improved upon in this game to an extent. It's a shame the Mega Crash did not make it from Tyson Logan. I, I thought that was a very good defensive mechanism, especially when you were being raped on the wall and you couldn't redo really anything. But that was like a game changer, I thought. I thought. The game is, is pretty good and it's also fun and it's more balanced but it does have its cheap moments, you know, but every fine game has its cheap moments. 
Honestly, I was kind of disappointed in the game, and not because it's it's not a good game. It's just there's an underwhelming feeling, you know. I got from playing it, you know, especially from all the hype and all the the expectations. You know, the game was gonna do this, it was gonna be this, and, and you know, I, I guess you could say it's a disappointment in that sense. But you know, regardless, it's a good game, just not one I would pay full price for, you know. So anyway, that's my review, and I'll see you guys next time.